Welcome, my name is Dominique Junot. I work for Oracle Server Technologies. This is the third demonstration of seven demos about in-memory column store new feature introduced in Oracle Database 12102. This one illustrates how in-memory compression of in-memory objects populated in the IAM column store can influence either query performance or storage savings in IAM column store. There are three compression levels in IAM column store using different compression algorithm. The first one is basic, which does no in-memory compression at all. For query, which uses an in-memory compression algorithm fit for better query performance than for lower space used in in-memory column store. And this is the default when only memcompress is defined as a clause for the uh, segment. And the third one is for capacity with two levels, low and high. Low corresponds to an in-memory algorithm fit for lower space used in in-memory column store. And it is used for getting a balance between high compression and better query performance. Capacity is specified without low or high. It defaults to for capacity low. For capacity high corresponds to an in-memory compression algorithm that compresses data at a higher ratio than low and therefore providing higher storage savings in in-memory column store than low. Let's connect under the SSB user and list the segments which are already populated in the IM column store. There are two of them, line order and supplier. The Vidala IM segments view displays the actual size of the segments on disk compared to the IM column store size of the same segments in the in-memory column store. Both of the segments are completely uh, populated in the IM column store. Why do we know that? Because the populate status column displays completed. Let's view now the new instance parameter with its value, the in-memory clause default parameter. Instead of setting the in-memory attribute, each time you, you create a new object, you can specify a default mode for in-memory tables at instance level by setting this new parameter. By default, it is set to an empty string. This means that only explicitly specified tables are made to be in-memory when in-memory clause is used. So let's create now a table A with the explicit in-memory clause and B with the explicit in-memory clause and the basic in-memory compression level. The memcompress clause distinguishes in-memory compression from on-disk compression. You can now see from the data dictionary, the A table is automatically assigned the for query in-memory compression and the table B is explicitly assigned the basic in-memory compression because you explicitly defined it. Now change the default value of the instance parameter and create a C table. The C table is automatically assigned the default basic in-memory compression. Now let's compute the compression ratio of the two segments that are already completely populated in the IM column store. The query shows the actual number of bytes of the objects as they are stored on disk and compares these values to the number of bytes stored in the IM column store. The query shows you how to get the compression ratio for each of the objects. What means the ratio? The line order table required one byte of IM column store to store two and a half bytes from disk. If you change the in-memory compression level for the supplier table from basic to for capacity high, you would certainly get a higher in-memory compression ratio. Nevertheless, 
accessing the supplier table would require a lot more CPU because the in-memory for capacity high compressed data must be decompressed to a certain degree before where clause predicates can be applied to it. Before we continue, let's uh, reset uh, the instance parameter to its default value. Now we'll see how to change the in-memory compression level for existing objects. We change the in-memory compression level for the supply table, reselect the data to repopulate the data in the IM column store, check that the data dictionary is updated, and discover the new in-memory compression ratio. It's indeed a much higher ratio due to the for capacity low new in-memory compression level. If you need to save more storage in the IM column store, update the in-memory compression level to a higher in-memory compression level. Check that the data dictionary is updated. See that the segment is not populated in the IM column store anymore. You have to reselect the data for a segment to be repopulated in the IM column store. Now the in-memory compression ratio is even higher than before. One byte only is required in the IM column store to store 57 bytes from disk. You can also perform the same operations on partitions, which are distinct segments, by setting different in-memory compression levels on partitions of the same partition table. Alter the sales table to be an in-memory object. All its partitions are now in-memory segments. They all inherited the in-memory attribute from the table, and by the same way, the in-memory compression level. Read the data from the partition table and check that all partitions are populated in the IM column store. They are all completely populated in the IM column store. The compression ratio is the same for all of them. We decide now to change the in-memory compression level for two of the partitions basic in-memory compression level for the seldom queried partition sales Q4 1998 and for capacity high in-memory compression level for the archive partition sales Q2 1999. The data dictionary is updated with the new in-memory compression levels. Reselect the data to have uh, the data repopulated in the IM column store. The sales Q4 1998 gets now a lower in memory compression ratio. You can also specify different in memory compression levels for different subsets of columns in a table. This is allowed, whereas different in memory priority levels for different subsets of columns in a table is not allowed. Let's see which the in-memory compression level is in the customer table. The default in-memory compression level for the customer table is four query. We now set different uh, in-memory compression levels for the customer key, name, address, and phone with a four query because it is often selected. New in-memory compression level for nation region marketing segment with a for capacity high in memory compression level because these columns are rarely selected and the city becomes a non in memory column because it is never selected it is only here for reporting we reselect the data to repopulate the data in the in memory column store we can see that the C city column number four is missing in the list when queried, the data is in the buffer cache. We can also set in-memory attributes on table spaces. Note that the default only applies to newly created tables and does not apply to existing tables. Let's take an example. 
the TS data table space has no in-memory attributes by default. Two tables are stored in the table space. We modify the default in-memory attributes of the table space and we now create a new table with no in-memory specific uh, clause. The new table is assigned the default in-memory attributes of the TS data table space whereas the existing tables kept theirs. A last topic to cover is the compression advisor. Imagine you have a very large table that is already an in-memory table with an in-memory compression for query and you would like to know if changing the in-memory compression to a higher level would save some storage in the IM column store. Use the following procedure to give you an estimate of the compression ratio with a new in-memory compression level, such as the core capacity high. The IM colon store would store one byte for four bytes from disk. This is the estimation from the advisor. Now convert the table back to in-memory with the new in-memory compression level. Ensure the table is completely populated in the IM column store and calculate the actual compression ratio. It is even higher than what the advisor computed. This is the end of the demonstration and thanks for watching.